Hey guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I've learned as I've grown into the person that I am today. And today I want to do something a little bit different. Um, I haven't read comments on this channel in the last couple days, so I want to go through the comments and um, just see if something speaks to me. Um, for a topic on this channel. I also want to say that I would like to start addressing more comments on this channel. And what I mean by addressing comments is for you guys to uh, ask me questions. I've said this in the past and I, and I love doing this. I did it for a while, for a couple weeks, and then um, I stopped getting so many, so I just went back to reading the meditations and things like that. But I really love when people will say, hey Peter, like I'm going through this based on your life experience. Because anything that I share over here is just based on my life experience, sharing my experience, strength and hope. Um, I am not by any means an expert in anything that I talk about. Um, I'm just, you know, even when I talk about 12 step stuff, it's just my experience. It's not, I'm not a representative of any 12 step program or anything like that, but I love just uh, answering questions and when you guys are going through stuff or you want clarification about something that I talk about in my videos or you have questions about something that you ask it and then I get to respond to it in a video and just share about stories in my life. I feel that um, in all of our lives, we learn from sharing stories with one another. I think in my own life, I have learned the most from other people sharing their stories with me of what they've gone through, especially in recovery when we talk about, you know, there is no greater power than one alcoholic talking to another or one addict talking to another. When I have heard other addicts or alcoholics share their stories and I'm like, oh, I relate to that or I've gone through that or wow, I never thought of it that way. It's these aha moments that have really, really helped me in my life. You know, when I'm going through something and I'm talking to people in my support network and they're sharing things like that with me. You know, we, the idea of sponsorship in a 12-step program is really it's just a guide through the 12 steps, right? Um, but also, when I talk to my sponsor and she suggests things to me, you know, if I'm going through something, she'll share a similar situation that she's gone through and how she dealt with it. She won't say, I'm telling you, you have to do this. She'll say, you know, this is what happened to me in a similar situation. This is what I did, you know, take it or leave it. This is just my experience. And I think that's so helpful. Uh, when I have gone through things and shared them online and so many people have emailed me or shared stories of their own with me, it has been really, really helpful to me as well. Um, I would love for this channel to turn more into that, of me um, responding to questions or comments or, that you guys leave over here, and me just sharing personal stories of my life in relation to whatever issue or topic that you bring up. Um, because that, I think, in my life is how I've learned the most, um, is from listening to other people's stories and how they have you know, gone through things and basically how they've turned their wounds into wisdom. That's how I've learned the most in my life, and I would love for this channel to be a source of that as well. So let's get into some of these comments and let's see if there's anybody out there. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna skim through the comments and just see if there's anybody that has left any questions or anything. Um, so, um, okay. There's a lot of comments on this. On my one, I talked about trust. Okay, so somebody said, yes, being hurt too many times by people definitely makes it hard to trust future friendships, which is sad, because then you're almost punishing that person for the sins of someone else. But once you explain why, they're typically empathetic, at least in my case. And, I, and I'm, I'm not going to read names of the comments. I mean, they're still up there. You guys can go see them. Um, but I 100% agree with that. But like I said, I always go with my gut, right? Like I didn't say it in this video, but in most videos I say I always go with my gut. This, it, it's interesting this aspect of when you are going into other friendships or new relationships, if you don't trust that person, you're punishing them. Ultimately, what I've learned in my life, and this is just my experience, is that the person I'm punishing the most is myself. Um, because my inability to trust other people by being hurt so badly by other people is a guard that I put up. It's a wall that I put up from allowing other amazing relationships to happen in my life. That's not to say, I, I think like the hardest thing for me in relation to this comment, it's so true, this comment's so true, um, 
And like I have, I, I think I have, like especially in romantic relationships, I think I like punish the next person for like the sins of the past of the other relationships, you know, which is so unfair, right? Um, I've also learned a lot from the past relationships that I've gone through. I think that what's so hard is that when you're going through a situation like that and, and you're getting to know somebody new, that especially when it's not just you've been hurt once, but when you've hurt been hurt multiple times, you know, that people will say to you, you've got to trust again, you've got to get another relationship, you've got to start dating, it's healthy for you, and then you do, and then you get burned again, and then you get burned again. One of the things that I had to look for was, are there patterns to the people that I am picking and choosing to date or be with? You know, like somebody in here said something about, uh, well, I, I'll read the comment, they just said, some, pay attention to them, red flags, ignoring them, I'll always, only Fs you over. And I agree with that. Um, I am somebody that ignores red flags left and right, you know? And when I, you know, so when I do inventory and recovery and I start taking a look at like my resentments, like this is part of the four step process in recovery, you do um, a list of resentments that you have. And when I start looking at resentments that I have at people, right? and how they've hurt me and whatever. The fourth column of what you do is, and what is my part in that? And, and you don't always have necessarily a directly related part to your resentment. I mean, a lot of us have, um, you know, validated anger, validated trauma over things that really happened to us. You have no part in that trauma. You have no part in that. My part is in what I did with it down the road, how it affected my other relationships with people. Am I allowing it to kill, to still keep me untrustworthy of other people and things like that. That's my part in it today. It doesn't necessarily have to be my part in that action that happened years ago. It can be, what is my part in this today? And this was something that my sponsor had to really explain to me that I didn't understand, right? Because we would go over stuff and I would have resentments that grounded resentments at people that had really done me wrong, that I had no part in that action whatsoever. And she would say, you have no part in this. You did nothing wrong. This was horrible that it was happened to you. One of the greatest things that came from my inventory was when my sponsor would say to me these things, I would share these things with her, not all of them, but you know, some of them. And she would say, and she was the first person that ever said this to me, I'm sorry that ever happened to you. Those are such validating words if you've never heard them from somebody before. To have somebody look at you over something that maybe you've never shared with somebody or shared authentically with somebody, for them to look at you with tears in their eyes and say, and I'm sorry that that ever happened to you, you didn't deserve that. But what she explained to me was, even though I didn't have a part in what had happened to me, the action that originally happened to me, my part in that today is, how am I allowing that to affect my life today? The idea of inventory is not to post blame. The idea of inventory is to become a healthier person. So I don't want those resentments from my past or the anger that I have from trauma and things like that or the feelings and the emotions to keep me stuck in the past. I want to be able, you know, it's like the definition of forgiveness by Oprah that forgiveness is accepting that what happened happened. Not that what happened was okay, but that it happened. And what am I going to do today so that I'm not held hostage to the past? I don't want to be held hostage to things that happened to me when I was four or five or 10 or 12 or 20 or 25. I don't want to be, or 30, six years old. I don't want to be held hostage to that stuff. I don't want to continue to relive it. You know, I talk so much about bullying because bullying had such a profound impact on me. And I still see it play out in parts of my life today, which is why I still talk about it with my therapist and still do work on it. You know, people say things to me all the time in videos. They're like, why are you still talking about this? Just get over it. You know, it's... <laughs> It's really grieving the loss of who I was at that age, you know, and realizing, I and mean, we talk about foundation years and, you know, emotional development being until the age of 25. The, the enormity of my foundation years and my emotional development was grounded in being put down, belittled, and people saying I was less than than I was. That's going to have an impact on me for the rest of my life. The issue is I don't want it to continue to have an issue with me. I don't want it to do that, so I have to do the work on it, right? So even though I had no part in, um, I had no part in the bullying, I didn't ask for it, you know, whatever, my part in it today is how am I allowing it to continue to affect my relationships today? Am I not allowing myself to have relationships because of it? Am I not trusting people? Am I not standing up? This is why standing up for myself is so important. Am I not standing up for myself today? That's my part in it, right? And I have to look at those patterns and I have to say, what am I continuing to do today so um, that I can be different than who I was back then? That's important, you know? Um, 
But I ultimately think, although I completely agree with this, this comment that we punish those people that are coming next. I mean, that is so true, right? Like, we really do. Like, the next person up in line is the person that's going to be punished for the sins of the person that were there behind them and what they did to us. Um, but the ultimate thing is that we're punishing ourselves. We really are hurting ourselves because we're not allowing ourselves, you know, to have this person. I remember this new, new person in our lives, I remember when um, I met my friend Tanya 26 years ago, my best friend in the entire world, my heart stone that I never thought I would ever have, right? And I had had a very dear friend before I got sober and after. She lives in Germany now. And she didn't really hurt me. She didn't really do anything negative towards me. She was very supportive of my sobriety and things like that when I first got sober. But when she moved away, I had two friends, one that I was friends with and we drank and used together and then she got sober on New Year's Day and she and I went to a lot of meetings together. She and my other friend moved around the same time, out of state, far away, you know, and um, my one friend, um, my roommate, she moved to California. My other friend uh, moved to Arizona to go to grad school. And I felt completely alone. I felt very abandoned. And at that point, I no longer really wanted to get close to people. I felt like people always leave you. That was how I felt, right? Um, I had instances in my childhood where I felt like that, that I would get close to people and then they would leave. Um, and, and even though I knew that my friend that went to grad school, that was great. I was so proud of her. I was so happy of her, right? And my friend that, my roommate that moved to California, it was an opportunity for her. I was excited for her, you know? Um, but at the same time, personally, it hurt because I was losing those people. I didn't have that around me anymore. And this was a point in recovery where I didn't know a lot of people. And so when I had like my first boyfriend and things like that, but other than that, I didn't really have a lot of people. And that was at the time that um, I met Tanya at her kennel. And she said, you know, come and stop by sometime. I was so terrified to do that. And part of me being terrified wasn't just my social anxiety of meeting somebody new, which was a huge part of it. Part of it was also in not trusting a new relationship. You know, how do I know that I'm not going to, because I always play it all the way out. It's not just like meet this person for coffee and then that might be it. Like, you know, I'm always like meet this person for coffee and then we're having Christmas dinner together and 20 years down. Like, I always play it way out, right? Like, what is this friendship really going to be about, you know? Which is one of my, you know, one of my uh, my uh, weaknesses in my life that I play things all, I, ex I expect way too much people, you know? I think it's also a safety net for me because if I play it out and I can find that that person's going to let me down or hurt me down the road, then I don't even engage in it to begin with. This is what I'm talking about in regards to this comment because she's so right. Um, and then I punish that next person and I almost kind of punish that person to ultimately sabotage a relationship so that there's nowhere for that relationship to go. And then I go, see, people do screw you over. And so I punish that person enough that they want they don't want to be in that relationship. That is one of the things I've had to learn the, the most right? Is to not sabotage relationships based on past relationships. It's like, I don't feel like I'm good enough. I don't feel like I'm worth it because so many people have screwed me over in the past that I, this relationship can't possibly be good. So I start putting all this stuff out there, blaming them for what happened in the past. And then they're like, I can't handle this. And then I'm like, see, another person left. This is what happens. This is why you don't trust people. When in reality, the work needs to be within me. So at the time that I met Tanya, I was so afraid to let new people in my life. I was terrified of it. You know, I was like, God, if I let somebody new in my life, how do I know that two weeks from now they're gonna be there? I don't have anybody right now. It's easier sometimes for me to be completely alone than it is to have people in my life that I have to trust and depend on, you know? So I can remember when she and I started becoming friends, it was very scary for me, you know? But that being said, that ended up being the greatest friendship I've ever had in my entire life, and I'm so grateful for it. You know, had I not taken that risk and taken that chance and that risk to befriend somebody else, um, then uh, she wouldn't be in my life today. And I'm so incredibly grateful that she is. And since I've met Tanya, I've met many people that um, the friendship didn't work out or I felt hurt or abandoned um, and you know and I'm not a victim I'm sure you know there are other friendships that I made that they felt the same way about me and things like that and that's the other thing is I have to take a look at my behaviors and my actions and who am I, who am I in a friend am I being the best friend to somebody that I can be am I being the best partner to somebody that I can be it's real easy to always point the other finger. And I'm not talking about in traumatic situations or, you know, abusive traumatic situations. I'm talking about in day-to-day -day friendships, day-to-day relationships, things like that. 
it's really easy, and it has been really easy for me to point the finger at the other person in my past, right? Today, what I'm trying to do is saying, am I stepping up to the plate and being the best friend that I can be? Am I being the best partner that I can be? Am I being the person that I would want to be a friend with? Am I being the person that I would want to be in a romantic relationship with? Because that's ultimately all I can control, you know? But I'm so thankful for this comment. This was a great, there were a lot of great comments I just, when I was just going through here, seeing that everybody was talking about this trust thing. Trust is so hard, you know, it really, really is. But ultimately it's about us. It's the work that we have to do on ourselves. And I really had to learn that it's not about forgetting what happened to us. It's about like the other comment said, being aware of the red flags. And when the red flags get too much, you go, okay, I can't, like this is, I have to be smart about this. But also not completely turning yourself off or, you know, closing yourself off to the world. We all of us, I think, crave to some degree, or I can only speak for myself, I crave and deserve human interaction, friendships, relationships with people. I want that in my life. It makes my life even better. For me to do that, for me to trust people, I have to work on my own trust issues. And that's one thing I've been doing for 10 years now, you know, over 10 years now. It's not something that happens overnight. It's tough. So anyway, thank you for the comment. I really, really appreciate that. Um, leave me more comments, and I will pick and choose comments to make videos on. This is what I really, really... I mean, I love reading the meditations, but this is what I really love doing over here, and I like to continue this. So anyway, I love you guys so much. I hope that you're having a fantastic beginning to your weekend, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.